Hello and welcome to Giselle Music Motivator. My name is Giselle and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to break into the music industry as a beginner. So grab a pen, grab a journal and maybe use your phone or whatever to take notes. Let's get on with it. Let's start now. So you will need a binder. The binder you can buy a hard copy at Staples or we could just use your computer which I prefer because then you can save it to the cloud and not worry about things getting lost. In this binder you will put everything to do with your career. Everything from you to all the different things. In fact, in fact I have made for you a, um, a list of all the things that I can't go through this whole list today, but I will be actually doing a few of them. And I'll put this uh, list, it's actually going to be under the video, so you don't worry about if you didn't get that down. Right, so the two first thing, first two things on the list, I didn't actually put on the board, and that's you and your band. So you, I'm going to talk to you about you. What you want to put under you is everything to do with you. And you may say to me, but I already know everything there. But do you? And is it all locked up in here? Or maybe it's in a different part in your computer, or maybe you put some bits in your phone or in there. You want it all in one place, which is why I devised the binder. Also, when you add people into your team, like a manager, a, a publicist, promoter, they will love the fact that you have done all your thoughts. You've done this binder and you've put all your thoughts down so they can see it too. Under you, you're going to write down everything that makes you who you are. And I know some of you don't want to be branded, but you just have to get over that and just brand yourself. So if you think, to, to, you say to me, well, I don't know how to brand myself, I have no idea. Find an artist from your country, could be somebody super famous, someone in the middle career, someone just a step up from you, wherever it is, and target them. Um, take screenshots, uh, copy and paste, or if you're doing it old school, you'll have to cut them, uh, cut out and glue. And what you want to do is you're going to build up this person on your, under you, and then extract everything that uh, you like. For example, you like the way their hair is, or you like their lipstick, or you like the clothes they're wearing, or you like um, or whatever it is, you're going to extract the bits you think work for them and could also work for you. And also the things that you don't like and that the reasons why you don't like. Um, then you will start to collate an image, build up an image of what you are and what you say that reflects your music. So that when we go to Spotify or to anywhere on social media, we'll see you and we'll be like, oh, I want to listen to this and oh, I recognize that person. And we can keep going back to the thing that we like. Much like if you go to a supermarket and you find something you like, you go to that brand because you know it, you like it. That's what branding is and that's what you have to do. Underneath your brand, still in you, you're going to make another title and that's going to be your music. In your music, of course, you're going to put down your genre, where you want your music to be right now. It will evolve as you evolve as an artist, but for right now, well, what is your music? What genre? What instruments? What kind of production? All of that beautiful, exciting thing about your music. Put it down on a piece of paper. Let's have a look at it. Put it down under your first tab, you. The third part that I want you to put under you is actually going to be later on in the video, so I will be coming back to it. But that's, for example, what you would put under you. I'm going to move on to another part of the binder. I'm going to talk to you about how the binder can be boring and frustrating and tedious. And of course, you're not getting paid to do it yet. But I'm also going to tell you how it works. So let's go back to this uh, board here. Um, what I want you to look at is networking. So networking is one of the most important. In fact, after you, it's the most important thing about the music industry. And I know musicians, as a rule, tend to hate it. I hated it when I started. You need to get into the whole mindset of the music industry being built on relationships. It's being built on word of mouth, emails, social media, 
but it's all about building relationships and contacts. Also, the other thing you need to know is that everyone in the music industry is always looking for new music, new acts, new performers. Always, contrary to what you may think, we need new music all the time, which is a brilliant thing for you. But you need to understand how to get those people interested in you. If you go up to a person and start saying, Hi, I do this and I'm the best songwriter you'll ever meet and my songs are the best. Nobody's going to want that. You wouldn't want that if you were them. Where do you meet networking people? You meet them at symposiums or music conferences. Anywhere where a lot of music people are going to be together. You buy your ticket and before you go, you research who's going to be at this let's call it a symposium, and who you might want to interact with. You go online and you find out every single thing you can about them, who they've worked for before, what they look for, what they're doing now, anything and anything that's that's a little bit quirky, maybe they put at the bottom of their bio, um, I love eating chocolate on a Sunday afternoon, something like that that you can then refer to when you meet them. So you go up to them and you say, hi, I'm so excited to see you. I've been desperate to meet you. And now you're here at this symposium. Um, my name is so-and-so. And I understand you, let's say this person is a music supervisor. So collating music for, let's say, a TV show. You love the TV show. You go up to them and you say, um, I love the, the show that you're working on at the moment. The music is just so brilliant. And um, I would love you, I'd love to be able to send you some of my music. Could I send you some? And they'll say, yes, great. I'd love that. Um, and then you take down their email. Please write it down as you are in front of them, maybe on your phone or in a book. Let them see you've got the email right. You don't want to ruin that. And then the next week or whenever they've said they want to hear from you, you send them an email. email and in your email, you refer to maybe you did mention about eating chocolate on a Sunday afternoon and how you like to do that too, you're making a humour. Humour in a respectful way is a brilliant, brilliant way of networking, as is being humble and genuine. So you're saying you wanted to get your music to them, you're being honest and you're being humble by saying, thank you very much for taking the time, I know how busy you are. They may get back to you and say, yeah, your music's not right for me, but here's John Jones's number, uh, email address, you know, drop him a line. And that's, that's two contacts. You now have a uh, solicited, not unsolicited contact. So when you contact John, you can say, oh, so-and-so recommended I contact you. That's brilliant. Next time you go to an event, you'll now know two people. So that is networking. And in your binder, and what you do under the networking tab is you write down everybody you met. So say you came back from the symposium and you've got 10 people here. You write them in your networking, the date you met them, that anything that you said to them that will spark a memory for you as well as for them and who they work for and their name, obviously, and their contact. That is a brilliant thing to have under networking. Again, when you get a team around you, you can show them that tab of all the people you've met and they'll say, maybe your manager will say, oh, I know that person, that's so cool. I'll contact, I'll reach out to them now. See how important the binder is. So that is networking. One more tiny little bit from the binder before I move on to something completely different. And that is competitions and contests. A lot of people don't like them. A lot of musicians say, you know, it's not for me. And that is absolutely okay. For those of you who like contests and competitions, it is an excellent way into the music industry. But check your contracts before you sign them because they can be brutal. When you are researching contests and competitions online or through, through word of mouth or however you're going to research them, I would suggest starting online. You're going to write down when the competitions are, where they are and what the prizes are and in your diary or in your phone you're going to put little reminders six months in advance so you know you're working on your music and also when the application deadline is so you've got advance warning you're not scrabbling around at the last minute something comes up in your phone you're like oh yes i need to get that ready all of this information again is in that tab of competitions and contests if you like what you're hearing please click subscribe and the bell so you know that every friday i release new videos 
ping, you will be notified. So now we're moving on to a, another part of your career. So there are three main parts to your career. The career side, <clears throat> as in what we were just talking about, the industry, the music industry and how it works. The second thing that I want to talk to you about is going to be your skill set. So that is songwriting, performing, singing and your accompanying instruments if you have one. These are all really, really vital things. You have to be the best that you can be. And note, I said the best that you can be and not better than anyone else or worse than anyone else. As if you'd want to be worse. Anyway, so that's that. And then the, the last part I'm going to talk to you about today will be your mindset. So that's how you need to think as a musician in order for your mind to work for you so that you can succeed in the music industry today. So going back to number two, that is your skill set. Today, I want to talk to you about the X factor, the it that people talk about. Do you have it? Do you have what it takes? Are you this person that we can watch and think, oh, they're amazing? Or do we swipe? Why do you swipe on social media? Ask yourself that question. You see so many wannabes. Why do you swipe? I can tell you. It's because they do not have the X factor. It could be you don't like that genre, you don't like that look, you can't stand the voice, but more often than not, you'll watch for a bit and then swipe. And the reason is they're not being real, they're not being, they're not accessing their X factor. So do you have the X factor? Yes, you do. Everybody does. That's the brilliant thing about it. But, and this is where it's very important, not everybody knows how to access it. All of the making believe of the, oh, and it hurts me to the, that's fake and it's not going to work and the people are going to switch off. When you see someone who is really amazing, it draws you in, the reason is they have the ability to switch it on instantly and that's what you have to learn. Some people are born with that and can actually access themselves really easily and really quickly. Some of us have to work a bit harder. Some of us have walls around us because we're sensitive musicians and um, we have to protect ourselves from the world and then go on stage and not protect yourself. And I understand how difficult that is. So I'm going to show you what you have to do to access your X factor. You need to record yourself on your phone, on your iPad, whatever it is you use, and you need to watch yourself back. And I know it's uncomfortable at the start, but imagine yourself, imagine yourself in the third person. Imagine you are a teacher critiquing the student. And what you're looking for is every time, even if you watch the video through once and there's nothing that strikes you as brilliant, record again and try something different. As soon as you see one thing, that you think, oh, that's brilliant. Make that grow. Put more of that in, more of that, more of that, until in the end your whole video is that. It has this quality to it that draws people into your world as a musician, as an artist, as a uh, communicator of expression and emotion. So that's all it is. That is the X factor and you have it and you have the ability to access it. I will be talking to you in a few moments about winning something free where, with, with me um, where I can actually work with you to get this X Factor and to um, get your career strategy planned. So stay tuned for the very, very last bit. Again, please hit subscribe, please hit the bell and I will see you for the next and last bit of this video which is Mindset. Okay, so we are here now for the last part of this video, the mindset. And as I said uh, before, the mindset is a vital, absolutely vital, and probably, in fact, definitely the most important thing that you need to have working for you. And the good news is, it's your mindset, so you can control it. Nobody else can. It's your mind. I'm going to give you suggestions and exercises to do, but at the end of the day, you're the one who can do it, which is brilliant because it empowers you. It gives you the strength and the knowledge that you can actually do it.
and you can. So if you are, like most musicians, suffering from some kind of mental health blockage, which I am not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, so I'm not going to even pretend to help you with that. But what I will say is, if you are that way, do not worry. We can still work through that with these mindset exercises. So so the, the exercise just for today, I'm going to be doing more exercises um, on my videos every Friday and more things on the career and everything. But for ju just for today, one exercise. Okay, so this is the bit, this exercise is the bit that goes into the U part of your tab in the binder, which I was talking about right at the beginning. I don't know why this is all so complicated at the moment, but here we go. I want you to make a decision about what it is you want to be and be doing in two years time, where you want to be in your music career in two years time. It could be a global international success. It could be you just want to have released a successful single. So close your eyes for a minute and just think, where do I want to be in two years time? And write it down. So I wrote down, be assigned global artist because that's just the best in the world or not. But anyway, whatever you've put, that's my two-year goal. Now we're going to break that down into one year, six months, three months, one month, one week, and then on a daily journal basis. I'm not going to do that for you because it's utterly boring to hear what I have to say, but I want you to break it down so that if you imagine the top layer of a funnel is where you're going to be in two years, and then you're going down in the funnel, trickling all the way down to today at the bottom. So that was my two year. My six month might be to have released three singles. And then my today might be to write, um, start writing a song. Start writing a song, do some stuff in my binder, work on my skills as an artist, maybe even plan and buy a ticket to a, a music conference or something. That would be my plan on a daily basis. Please remember, it's not overwhelming. It's something that you're, it, this goal, this two-year goal is something that's going to be evolving with the tools I'm giving you now. It's not something that I'm saying, two years, let's do it now and let's go. It's not that, okay? It's a gradual process. And one last thing I'm going to leave you with is a little story before I talk about the freebie. It's a very, very short story and I hope you understand the message behind it. Every day I go for a walk in nature. I find it invigorating and it gives me stimulus sometimes to write new music and it gets me out of myself. So on this particular day, I was walking along and I found a beautiful lake and I thought, look at that beautiful lake. It's absolutely amazing. And then I saw a dam going from one side of the lake to the other and it was beautiful. I mean, there were bits it sort of wiggled and turned a bit, but it was absolutely brilliant from one side to the other. And I thought the little beaver that did that must just be amazing. How, how could it do that? How could it, how could it think to do that from one side to the other? How long did it take? And how can something that small make something this big? Well, it just so happened Mrs. Beaver was sitting there watching me, looking at her dam. And I said, Mrs. Beaver, how did you do this? This is absolutely amazing. How long did it take you and how did you do it? How did you keep going? Well, the thing is, my dear, it did take me a very long time. And there were moments when I was just beside myself, when things were falling apart. But I kept going. And I kept going because I knew that all I had to do was use one stick at a time. One stick at a time. And I just... And then she swam away. And that's the end of the story. But what I'm trying to say to you is please don't feel overwhelmed. Anything that's intricate and uh, multi-layered like the music industry and your music career will take time. You have to be patient and do it one stick at a time. That's why breaking it down into days and weeks rather than keep going back. Well, I want to be a global superstar. That's not going to help you. So that's the end of the talk today. I just wanted to tell you about the freebie. So I would love to be able to talk to you one-on-one -on -one for one hour online 
and help you plan your career, listen to your music, give you strategies and helps and give you some mindset exercises. If this is something that you would like, all you have to do is contact me, direct message me uh, on Instagram or you can, um, I put links anyway underneath the video. You can contact me directly, you can email me uh, or you can use the contact page on my website. My email is info at giselmusicmotivator.com and I promise you I will read everything. What I need from you is the reason why. Why do you want to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me for an hour? That's all I need to know. I wish you good luck, toy toy, and I will see you next Friday. And thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Goodbye.